In this example, we have a 0 0.15 kilogram ball on the end of a 1.1 meter long cord swung in a vertical circle. Determine the minimum speed the ball must have at the top of its arc so that the ball continues moving in a circle. And B, calculate the tension in the cord at the bottom of the arc, assuming the ball is moving at twice the speed of part A. So for this problem, we're gonna have two different scenarios one at the top and one at the bottom. And what you see in the image is that the free body diagrams are different. At the top, the ball has both gravity and tension in the same direction as the acceleration towards the center of the circle. While at the bottom, the force of tension is in the same direction as the acceleration, but the gravity is in the opposite. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna write down what is known, which we have the mass is equal to 0 0.150 kilograms, and the radius is 1.10 meters. All right, and we're trying to find the velocity. So we're gonna use the equation AR is equal to V squared over R, and we're also going to use the equation net force is equal to m a r but in this case we have we're trying to solve for the velocity instead of um, using it to figure out the centripetal acceleration so we're going to keep v as itself so we get m v squared over r and if we look at case one we know that the only force, um, forces acting towards the center are going to be gravity and the force of tension. So we have force of tension plus mg is equal to mv squared over r. In this case, though, it's saying what is the minimum speed? And when we have the minimum speed, we know that the tension in the string at the top is actually going to be equal to zero because you're going to feel no force to keep it in. The only thing keeping it in the circle is gravity. So if we do that, we also notice that the m's are going to cancel to both sides. So if we solve for v, we get v squared is equal to gr, which means that v is equal to the square root of gr. And if we just plug in square root of 1.1 times 9.8, and we get, for V, we get 3.28 meters per second. For part B, we're going to have the same setup, but in this case, the force of tension is not going to be zero. And the force of tension is in the opposite direction as gravity. So when we write out net force equals m v squared over r, we get the force of tension, because it's in the same direction as the acceleration, minus mg equal to m v squared over r. So if we solve for the tension, we get force of tension equals m v squared over r plus mg. And what we're going to do is we are going to just plug in, and we're going to also factor out the m to make it a little easier, so we get v squared over r plus g and the mass we have as 0 0.15 times v which is going to be 2 times 3.28 which is 6.56 that's going to be squared over the 1.1 plus 9.8. When you plug that into your calculator, you should get 7.34 newtons.